Saga continues. Back with the voter board. So here we are. You've built your voter board. It's ready to go. One problem is, is that when you plug it in, there is nothing that happens. And that is because the pick, this guy right here, the microcontroller, has no programming. And that is something that you can resolve and that some people might find a little um, off-putting if they've never have, never have had done it before. So it's pretty much programming a bootloader into this PIC. That bootloader allows it Ethernet access on a default IP of uh, 192.168.1.11. And then there's another programmer that will uh, then load in the firmware. Now, there's a way to load in the firmware without loading in the bootloader, but uh, I'm not going to get into that. So to step back a little bit, show you kind of what I've been doing. Uh, you might have noticed on this board that some of the ICs, in fact most of them except for these two here, are socketed those devices are socketed. I like to have socketed ICs just in case I need to change one, in case there's something wrong with one. Um, and you can just pop it out and pop a new one in and have a nice day, especially with uh, through-plated pads, which can be a real bugger to get the, uh, to get the uh, solder out of. You also notice on this board, there's this little odd guy right here. This is a SOIC to dip adapter. This adapter, basically a little experiment. This IC is, is obsolete that goes in this socket. And, but there is a surface mount version of it. And this is it. And it does work. It works just fine. I managed to get grab some off of eBay of the originals. As you can see on this board here, that is... Um, started to be populated as I get the time and funds to purchase parts. Um, and uh, the reason why this isn't socketed is just to me being uh, impatient. So, same reason why this guy isn't socketed here. Um, so anyway, uh, this board is got definitely a lot more parts on it than you would think. So, um, and it takes some time to put together. Basically, it took me two evenings. Two evenings to put together. So, and this is, like I said, this is a partially completed board. And, uh, like I said, PCB way where I get these boards made in, uh, out of, uh, 100% Chinesium, uh, they do a great job. And it's not expensive. And you get them in like a week. So, you know, I do suggest them to get your boards made. Um, so, it's a double-sided board. And, uh, like I said, they do a good job. And, you know, my soldering skills are certainly decent enough that I don't mind them having being on camera. So, but back to the programming. So, putting this together... You know, anybody with decent soldering skills and who has, a, who has uh, any idea how to put something similar to this together can do this. Um, you know, many of you have probably put together kits as, as complicated or more complicated than this. Some of the Heath kit stuff was definitely more complicated than this um, in the past. So, what you have here, to program this pick... Um, you need a programmer. And that programmer plugs in here, this, this pin header. That programmer is, you ideally want a pick kit three. And I have mine over here. It's this guy. Get, get this off of Amazon. I think it's like 25 bucks. It comes with this cable with the, with the pin header and you know, 
this indicates pin one. And so you want to follow that wire. Pin one is the this pin right here closest to the front of the board where the connectors are. So you want to plug that. You want to plug the pit kit in and remove this jumper. You need to remove this jumper here to uh, power on the board uh, and power on the board. Um, and then from there you'll be able to load the bootloader. Um, in a second we will see us loading the bootloader and getting everything programmed as the dogs bark. Okay now we're ready to program the pick in the voter board. Forgive any noises upstairs. It's the day before Thanksgiving and the girlfriend is getting ready. So have the board off. Make sure you have the jumper removed and make sure you have the kit program connected. Pin one is farthest to the front. Make sure you look at the uh, look at the little symbol on here for pin one on the programmer. And you need to get MP Lab 8.66 installed on your machine and there's download links for it and let us go our bootloader section of allstarlink.org slash wiki slash rtcm underscore client so this will actually tell you how to program this pick it also has download links on this website for the MP Lab software and the voter master zip file you can download that has all of the firmware, the bootloader, pretty much everything. It has everything that's part of the project. So, let us start up MP Lab here. Let's start up MP Lab here. And let's go back to our. Oh, let me go back to Firefox. There we go. We go to go to project, open and voter, voter bootloader.mcp. So let us do that. Project, open, and it, that's going to be in that master file here. And you're going to find under the master file, under a folder, called voter, voter, voter. I don't know why I call it, keep calling it voter. I'm having a strange day. The voter bootloader. So let's open that. And the next piece of information they give us, go to file, import, voter, under voter-bootloader folder, enc underscore c30.cof. So we'll go to file, import, enc underscore c30.cof. This one, the SMT version, is actually for the RTCM, which uses a slightly different pick. But you want this one for the pick we are using. Open. And then that will say loaded. Next thing you do is we want to choose the programmer we're going to use. Select programmer and select pick kit 3. And we'll put that in there. It's got the firmware type for this already for this pick already in there and it's yelling because I don't have the board on yet. Another thing you really want to do is make sure you have the right device selected. Um, this is the right device, ds pick 33 fj 128 gp 802 The SMT version that's in the RTCM actually has version 804. So hit OK, and we're going to turn the board on. What's going to happen is the MP lab is going to detect the device. Target detected. So let's go back to our directions, and it says attach a pick kit, select your programmer, go to program, programmer, and program. KC2IRB, All Star Repeater System. So, configure, tools, programmer, so, uh, program, and it will program. It is now programming it with the bootloader. Programming verify complete. So there you go. Your bootloader is in there now. Now that that bootloader is in there, 
There is no, um, there's no, um, what do you call it, uh, firmware. Just a bootloader. The bootloader will allow you to load in the firmware. So, what you want to do is sh shut off the unit. I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to move my camera back over here. We're going to disconnect the pick kit. Put our jumper back in place. And what we're next going to do is connect Ethernet up to this. Now, some I'm going to say a caveat. Sometimes after you load the bootloader, I'm sorry, after, I'm sorry, after you load the firmware, you can't communicate with this with Ethernet. You have to go in through the console. This is after you load the firmware. Um, you have to load it. You have to get it from the console, and then enter an IP address and save it, and it works. But for loading the bootloader, you have to go this way. The bootloader IP address of this is 192.168.1.1. Let me get my laptop set up here in that IP address range. Uh, I'm going to turn this on. And give me just a second here. Need to program it in the address range in order to get this working. So I am already in that address range. See that it's linking fast. It means it doesn't have any firmware yet. So close, close. MP Lab has done its job. We don't need that. Now, what we're going to be going to is uh, under Voter Master. And I'll bring you back to the laptop. Voter Master, in the master folder that you're going to download. Um, we have, it's the Eblex C30 Programmer. We're going to open that. And then there's just an executable in here. And we're going to open that. And this address is set. We're going to look for the file, which is going to be the firmware file. And in this particular one, I like to use Chuck Squelch. And I'll explain what that is later. But this, you know, these firmware files will work. This is, I think, the latest revision, if I remember correctly. I thought 1.6 was, but I can't find it in here. It's all 1.5. So there are other options here. There's also an SMT option, which is for the RTCM specifically. Um, but let us put that one in here. We'll open that file. Once that's open, down here you're going to go Capture Target. And it looks like it has captured the target. Target address. And it's ready to go, it looks like. Let us hit Program. And it will begin to program. And now... It's completed. Now we're gonna you're gonna see this thing blinking like crazy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to reboot this thing. Shut it off. Turn it on. And then you should see this begin to boot up with that light. And after a minute, it should come up. And blink steady. And with that steady blink, it means that the firmware has successfully loaded in the firmware. But this is what you should get. That should be the login screen right there. So I'm not going to log in because it does not keep the digits. What I will do, and this is what you should have when you log in. If everything went well. That's what should you should have. So that brings the board to life with all the software. So, and uh, you should log in. Like I said, the login IP address is 192.168.1.10.
the bootloader address by default is 1.11, but the uh, the login for a telnet, this is a telnet session by the way, um, is, uh, is dot ten, and then you can change it to whatever you want. Um, and there you go. That will give you a fully functioning uh, unit. Like I said before, when you load the firmware, you might have to uh, first load the firmware. It might not let you in Ethernet-wise through Telnet. You may have to do a console, you know, console serial port into it, which is 57600 baud, and then set the IP address on the Ethernet port, and then it'll work. So, uh, next video I'm hoping to do is going to be on the actual construction or some changes in the construction and also some part substitutions that you're going to have to make off the original bill of materials um, because some of those are no longer available they change part numbers or some of them are obsolete so but um, hopefully uh, we'll get through that and everybody will have a better understanding of this and certainly uh, get a handle on it quicker than I did initially that's all for now.